Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. I have been experimenting in my bullet journal for a little over a year now, but it's officially been a full year of consistently using it. So I wanted to do a little one year review with you guys. In this video, I'll take you through my bullet journal and show you a year's worth of pages in it. And I'll show you what I learned, uh, what I tried, what I liked, what I didn't like, and what I want to move forward with in the next upcoming year. And maybe you'll get some inspiration from it. I know there's a huge bullet journal community out there. So if you have any tips to share, leave it in a comment below. And if you haven't already, check out my playlist full of bullet journal ideas all my bullet journal related videos are in there. I will also put that link in the video description below and if you want to see more bullet journal videos on this channel, hit that like button and let's dive in. So here is my bullet journal I've been using for over a year now. It's a junior size notebook made by Levenger. The discs and the covers are made by Levenger but the insides are all kind of custom and I went through this whole notebook setup in a video previously, which you can check out up here. I will also link that down below. For the most part, I'm still using that exact same layout I showed in that video. For my pages, I like to use a dot grid, which I made that is kind of custom to the size of handwriting I like to use. And I'll put that dot grid down below if you want to use it as well. I print out a dot grid on a piece of letter size paper and then I cut it in half and then I punch the holes for my journal. My journal is basically a glorified to-do list and my setup is very simple. I put the day first and then I write the date underneath that and I highlight it or outline it. Then to list my tasks, I use a dash for work-related stuff and a open circle for personal stuff. That way I can go through my list and kind of prioritize. If I need to do more work stuff that time, I'll just go through and find all the dashes and same with the personal stuff. And then when I'm done with my task, I just uh, fill in this dot grid square. And if I've only done half of it, I'll fill in half of the square. So starting with this page, I used to leave a lot of space on the bottom and I realized I could probably fill that with some doodles or something if I had the time, but in this case, on this page, I didn't. And I've mentioned before, one reason I really like the disc binding system is that I can put notes in wherever I want to. If I have some kind of loose piece of paper hanging out somewhere, I can keep it all together or punch holes in it and put it in a journal. I'd rather have this journal be more productive than pretty, that is something I keep in mind all the time when I'm doing this. But if I have time, of course, I love to express some creativity on the pages and doodle something or draw. So for example, here's a mandala page, which I did a video on. Marking off the tasks like this is also a great way to kind of test out any pens that you're curious to see how they work and how they come out on paper. So I did that a lot with my gel pens because I have so many. I also started to use this journal to document some of the thoughts and things that I went through business related. Like if I went to a conference, I don't want to forget everything that I thought was meaningful or that I gained from that. Again, I didn't really want to make this a diary, more of a work journal so I can document more stuff like that. I did talk about this spread in a video when I just did a flip through of this time, but my personal was kind of overlapping on my business side and I just really needed to take a break and I wanted to try and illustrate that and just have fun with a quote. But looking back at it now, I want to do more of this. And when I want to do a quote like this, I keep, I keep dividers here, so I pre-cut these just so I can grab a colorful paper if I ever feel like doodling something like that. So then I go back here and I just pop it in the disc. I left the back blank, but I did put the date on it. I feel like it should be blank, but it does look like wasted space a little. But anyway, here is another Mandela. This is the one that I did a video for, and I will link it up here and down below. Something fun you can do is coordinate the colors of your Mandela to the days, and you can start with Monday as yellow and then Tuesday's orange and kind of build it up every day. And again, I was trying more illustrations, kind of illustrating what I was going through that week. It's Valentine's Day week, so I put love yourself. This month was the March Doodle Challenge, and for the first time I wanted to try it in my bullet journal and see what it would look like. 
but as you can see, it didn't work out. I didn't finish it. If you don't know what the doodle challenge is, this is the layout that I share with you guys. You can download this in the video. I'll put the video up here and down below and you can doodle in your journal or on this sheet that I give you. But I wanted to try it for the first time and it just didn't work out. For some reason, I, it felt way more comfortable to doodle on this sheet than on this page. So I didn't try that again and I won't be in the future. I think I'll just stick to those sheets. And here is some tie-dye that I doodled. I got some new markers, so I was testing them out in a tie-dye. I also have a tutorial for that if you want to check that out. This is where I tried drawing on the blank space on the back of a page. I instead glued two pieces of paper together and I used a glue stick for this, but it does kind of warp the paper and make the paper super thick but it's something to try if you don't like blank space on the back of your pages. And this is another quote, don't let comparison steal your joy. And this was a busy week, so I didn't take time to do different colors. Sometimes that happens and it's totally okay. Don't get overwhelmed and feel like you have to make your pages super pretty. I don't wanna go that way. I just really wanna be productive in this. And then if I have the time, do something creative, but on the next page, I did have some time to doodle a really bad doodle of Kona. Again, super minimal, just black pen. It doesn't have to be pretty, just productive over pretty. Here are the cactus doodles, which I also made a video for, and you can also find this in that bullet journal playlist I showed you in the beginning of this video, and I kept them in my bullet journal. And I did draw on the back of that with a pattern. That's another way to fill blank space. If you just don't wanna leave it, you can doodle a pattern. And I guess I had time to add some color back into these pages. This was when I went to VidCon. I wanted to keep track of all the stuff that I learned from it. So the nice thing about the disc binding again is that you can transfer pages from one journal to another. And what I did is I just took this to the conference because I didn't want to carry around this big thing. And I did make these covers, which I do have a tutorial for. So I took these lined paper pages and I wrote all my notes. And then when I got home, I took them out of this and back into this journal so I can keep all of the year's pages together. And this paper is the original paper that came with this journal, the lined paper, but it's kind of thin, so I don't really prefer it. I really like thick paper, which is what this is. I'll put the exact weight of it down below if you're curious. And then back to my usual layout of stuff to do. Things that I tried on my social stuff, I tested some things out on my social platforms, and I just wanted to track them to see what I learned and what I wanted to continue with. Kept track of stuff I was trying to kind of lighten the stress in my day and seeing if it had any better results or whatnot. I think it's really helpful and healthy for someone to do that, that kind of runs their own show, just to kind of get stuff out of your brain and onto paper so you can work it out. More pages of just one pen, which is totally fine. It's very productive to keep it minimal. And here we are, caught up to date. So what I like to do when I'm on my page that I'm working on, I keep a divider on the left or right of it because I like doing this to my notebook and I don't want any like stuff that's on the table to get on my paper. So this kind of protects it. When I'm moving on to the next page, I'll just take the divider out and then pop it right next to it or I'll just put a new page next to it, whichever. It's also helpful if you use gel pens because they don't dry as quickly. So if you have this in between your paper, it's not going to transfer onto the other paper. So behind this divider, I keep all these blank pages so I can just grab it or it's ready to go. I keep all the dot grid first because it's the paper I use the most. And then I keep some of the Levenger lined paper which came with the journal in the back of that. And then past the other divider is the colored paper which I showed you. And behind that divider I keep some stuff like trackers or ideas of pages that I might try out. I've shared this on my Instagram, but this is my fitness tracker, which I'm trying. Each month is full of workouts to fill in, and it does keep me on track, surprisingly. Just having to fill in these squares with a color just really does keep me on track. And each color is a different kind of workout. On the back of it, I have the key, which is full of a variety of random workouts because 
I kind of quit the gym membership and I got creative with different workouts to try. I have like a step circuit, I do just dance, I look ridiculous when I do it, but it's really fun and I don't feel like I'm working out when I do it. Zumba, Blogilates, some YouTubers that I try. And for me, working out has become really important because it makes me more productive, it gives me more energy to get more stuff done, and I realize when I don't do it, I kind of get in a sluggish mode and I'm just not as creative, I get a little down, and working out, it's so simple and it only takes a little amount of time in your day, but it is really effective for me. So I kept this in my journal to motivate me more to work out more. So the next page is just full of bullet journal page ideas. If I don't write it down, I won't remember it. So I just keep a running list. Some I won't do, some I might try, but it's just nice to keep them all on a page. Going forward in the new year, I do want to add more illustrations. It's kind of therapeutic and I like sharing them with you. This year I started a page of just goals, so at the end of the year I could go back and fill in. I'll also do a little year in review, so this was 2016 in review, and I'll do another 2017 in review. Overall to remember what I learned in the previous year and what's important and what to focus on moving forward. And in the back I'll keep the failed ideas. This is an archive of what didn't work so I can go back and see what I didn't like about it and how to make it different. Uh, some failed attempts at logging my coffee collection. I just would really quickly sketch them out so I could later make them in a nicer layout. That's not really following my productive over pretty whole mantra but it was something to try and if I didn't get it out it would just keep swirling around in my brain. I did try to do a nicer page of the coffee collection. This was the start of it and I never finished it. In my previous bullet journal video I showed how I log stuff during the day and I do want to go back to that and find the time to kind of doodle just something really quick during the day and I think I like the layout where it's more the whole page doodled versus squares of it. It's fun and also I think it's therapeutic to doodle something from your day. Now that the year is coming to an end, I'm trying to figure out how I archive these pages. Because I can remove them from the bullet journal, I can keep the covers, but I'm just trying to figure out storage ideas as I get through the years. If you have any archiving ideas for disc bound notebooks, I would love to read it in the comments below. If you tried anything, let me know your experience. And if you want to see more pages, uh, what I'm up to in my bullet journal, I do post a lot more on my Instagram because there is a large community on there. So be sure to follow me over there as well as my other social links. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos on YouTube. And I will put some more related bullet journal videos around here. These links will be in the video description below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!